This morning, the first metered ramp in Spokane goes active. We are letting you know how this may change your commute and why DOT chose this spot. Authorities in western Washington arrested three people in a murder for hire case. They say a Spokane teenager may have been involved. The attorney general is in the hot seat today. He will be on Capitol Hill to answer questions about the Mueller report. 5 a.m. on our Tuesday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News. I'm Jen York and I'm Brittany Bailey. Well, we want to begin with a check of our weather forecast. I think it's a little copy and paste repeat, <laughs> isn't it? Mm -hmm. Hasn't it felt like that mm -hmm. for a little while? Definitely walked outside and went, Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely noticed it driving out of my garage. I was like, oh, it is raining. Yes, it Just is. Just like Evan promised it would be. <laughs> well, you know, he's accurate. We'll give him that. Uh, even though people aren't super happy about it being <laughs> the case. But yes, uh, we've already seen plenty of rain to start off our Tuesday morning, and we've only been in Tuesday for about five hours. But take a look at our rain total so far. That's why I added the so far in parentheses on here, because we are already at four one hundredths of an inch in Spokane, 14 one hundredths in Coeur d'Alene. Moses Lake is moving toward two tenths of an inch so far, so we've already seen plenty of rain. The only area on the screen here that hasn't seen any rain is North Idaho and about that northern third of Washington where Sandpoint is clocking in at nothing to start off the morning. Satellite radar right now showing though where those showers are. We do have a, a small uh, satellite outage right now for the Spokane Airport, so that is a reason why you may not be able to see kind of the full rain around us, but other uh, other satellites around the area are kind of filling in uh, what we're missing from the Spokane area. But what we see over the next couple hours show that chances of showers are going to increase as we go on with the next couple hours. By the time we hit about noon is our strongest chance for widespread showers, and then those chances are going to dip right back down into the evening and overnight hours. Wednesday morning shows a small, a very short uh, break in the wet weather. We should see partly cloudy skies by tomorrow morning, so tomorrow morning at least will not look quite the same as what we're seeing this morning. Right now, temperatures though primarily in the 40s. We're at 45 degrees in Spokane, 43 in Coeur d'Alene, and 47 in Ritzville. Coming up, we'll be talking about flood watches and warnings in effect with plenty more rain on the way. One of those flood warnings is in effect until further notice, meaning there is not even an expiration date on that. We'll let you know more about that coming up in just a bit. For now, Cody Crawford is going to take it away with a check of what traffic looks like to start off our morning. Hi, Cody. Good morning. I want to remind some drivers of an ongoing construction project in Spokane. Third Avenue will be closed to one lane only from Hatch Street to Arthur Street. Crews are installing some storm water piping in the area. So if you're headed out to this area this morning, I'd give yourself a few extra minutes to get to work on time. That is all the updates I have, but I will be back in 30 minutes with more. I'll now send it back to Brittany and Jen in the studio. Cody, thank you so much. Spokane's first metered ramp goes active in fewer than two hours, and five more are on the way by next year. Krem 2's Kira L. Fallen is live on Interstate 90 this morning. She has more on how the metered ramp works and why the Department of Transportation chose this spot. Good morning, Kiera. Yes, good morning. Well, we are coming up right now on the US 195 I-90 interchange where we should be seeing those flashing lights by 630 this morning. The Washington State Department of Transportation says you will need to be prepared to make two lanes, both of which will be metered, letting cars go at opposite times. And you'll see two flashing yellow lights that will tell you that the ramp is metered. As you progress down the land, a washdot traffic engineer says underground detection at the ramp allows the traffic signals to know when it is time to let drivers go and when to stop others. The US 195 I-90 ramp was chosen due to the amount of car crashes associated with this particular ramp. Vehicles pull up and there's a platoon of cars, so you have 10 cars all trying to get into one spot, and that creates collisions because what we get is either cars slow way down on the ramp or they stop on the ramp. And then what that causes is I-90 traffic to go into a, a slowdown and shock waves and accidents associated with that. This will help reduce that by allowing one vehicle to come on in a metered rate. So it'll set a gap between cars. He also says this new metered ramp should reduce congestion on I-90 and give people a more reliable estimate of commute times. During peak traffic hours, you could be waiting at the ramp for three to four minutes, but during normal traffic times, you could be waiting anywhere from four to 15 seconds. Washed up plans to add metered ramps to five other I-90 locations, eastbound at the Walnut Street on-ramp, eastbound at the Monroe Street 
on ramp eastbound at the Division Street on ramp eastbound on the Hamilton on ramp and westbound on the Brown on ramp. Now each metered ramp will cost anywhere from 300 to 400 thousand dollars and you should be seeing those five other ramps by summer of 2020. I'll send it back to you. All right, Kira, thank you so much. Again, those meters go live at 630 this morning, mm -hmm. so we'll be tracking that story throughout the morning. It is 505 on the dot now. A Spokane teenager is tied to a murder for hire case on the west side. That teen is one of three people in custody more than 18 months after a woman was murdered. Investigators believe the wrong person was killed. Back in September of 2017, 24-year-old Alicia Canales McGuire was found dead in the doorway of her sister's home in Snohomish County. Investigators questioned the sister's ex-husband, Kevin Lewis. He said he was at home the night of the murder. A year later, a woman from Spokane called in a tip. She said a teenager claimed she was paid to kill someone in Snohomish County. The teen was just 16 years old at the time and the ex-girlfriend of Kevin Lewis's cousin. Detectives discovered on the night of the murder, their phones were tracked across the state to western Washington. They say the two met up with Lewis, who took them to his ex-wife's home before the murder. 16-year-old um, young woman, the 18-year-old male had been paid by Kevin, had been hired to come out from Spokane to Snohomish County to essentially murder Kevin's ex-wife, um, and then they drove back. The intended victim was going to be the victim's sister. Kevin Lewis is accused of paying $2,400 to have his ex murdered. He already is in prison for a 2016 assault. A Southern Idaho sheriff resigned after being charged with multiple crimes. He is facing charges of rape, lewd conduct, and sexual abuse of a child. Lincoln County Sheriff Rene Rodriguez made his first court appearance after he was arrested Friday. He is facing seven felony charges spanning the course of nine years. His bond is set at $500,000. If convicted, Rodriguez would have to register as a sex offender, and he faces up to life in prison. He is due in court next Monday and scheduled to appear in front of a district judge. A committee has 15 days then to present three qualified candidates to fill the Lincoln County Idaho Sheriff position. President Trump made more changes at the Department of Homeland Security. It's all an effort to revitalize his immigration policies. Now, a federal judge blocked the Trump administration's policy of sending asylum seekers back to Mexico to wait out their cases. The president tweeted that the ruling was so unfair to the U.S. Meanwhile, changes are happening inside the White House. Several more senior leaders at the Department of Homeland Security are out this morning. It is part of a plan orchestrated by presidential advisor Stephen Miller. One of those leaders includes Secretary of Homeland Security Kirsten Nielsen. Also gone is the head of the Secret Service Tex Alice. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer gave his thoughts on the shakeup. The president and the White House staff may like to treat hiring and firing in the administration as some kind of reality TV show or parlor game. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Kevin McAleenan will take over as acting DHS secretary. Energy Secretary Rick Perry and former acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker could be in the running for the permanent secretary position. Attorney General William Barr is set to testify on Capitol Hill today. Lawmakers are expected to ask him questions about the Mueller report. Democratic lawmakers are looking for answers as to why a 400 page report was summarized to only four pages. Barr concluded special counsel Robert Mueller's report had not found any collusion between the president and Russia. This is Barr's first public appearance since the report was finished. The leaders of the House Judiciary Committee want Robert Mueller to testify later this month. Some committee members want to know what's in that special counsel's full report before Attorney General William Barr releases his version. Others want to wait for Barr's report so they can ask the right questions. Mueller would appear before the committee during the week of April 22nd. 509 now, the numbers are still growing. The measles outbreak across the country is getting worse. Nearly 100 new cases were reported in just the past week. The CDC reports there are now 465 cases of measles in 19 states. That is the second highest total in about 20 years. The CDC considers Washington one of seven areas experiencing an outbreak. 
Washington has 74 cases, most of those in Clark County. But in states that are experiencing an outbreak, health authorities say vaccinations are also up compared to last year. New research finds we may not be able to escape bacteria no matter where we are. Up in space even, NASA researchers say they are finding bacteria inside the International Space Station. A new study from the journal Microbiome shows the space station is filled with bacteria and fungus. The study used dozens of surfaces, wi surface wipe samples rather, taken from various locations around the space station. The bacteria and fungi found were samples typically found in places like offices or gyms back on Earth. But researchers warn it is possible the bacteria could corrode the structure over time. Researchers are still trying to determine how the bacteria will impact the astronauts. I suppose it's not so surprising. You get lots of folks in a pretty tight space and... It's amazing how clean it is compared. I mean, really. I mean, if you were living in such close quarters here on Earth, I'd imagine people would be getting sick. Yeah. And they managed to make it work, but looking at maybe ways to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> it is coming up on 5:11 now on this Tuesday. The college basketball has a new champion. We will have the highlights from last night's NCAA tournament finale. And one of Spokane's biggest events is just a few months away now. Organizers of Hoop Fest just released photos of this year's game ball. And it looks like that rain is going to stick around for a good portion of your Tuesday, but Wednesday could bring a little bit of a break with it. Find out in the forecast coming up.